So, my journey, my journey began, began with Typhac and then uh, with Electronica, Electronica where I was R&D officer and um, I did a little bit of hardware that worked but then later on it became kind of clerical job because I was told I'm going to be looking into ISO 9000 and documentation and I said uh, oh, no I've not done engineering just to be uh, a clerical uh, this kind of post I was well paid but then I thought okay let's uh, join academics and pursue my dream my dream as it happens, I started dreaming about stars, cosmos, all that since childhood. So uh, I wanted to go to the stars or work here and observe the stars. So astronomy, astrophysics, I didn't know the terms, but I wanted to be an astrophysicist. Honestly, initial uh, aspiration and ambition was to become a pure scientist, a pure physicist like that. It was not it engineering that came later on and my dad told stories about our very own indian scientists uh, even the ancient uh, uh, scientists and philosophers from bhaskaracharya aryabhatta to varahamihir uh, and uh, of course sir cv raman he inspired me and um, his famous words uh, they uh, made a permanent mark uh, so, in the history of science, we often find that the study of some natural phenomenon has been the starting point in the development of a new branch of knowledge. So, it was then that I wanted to be a scientist or mathematician. I was 100 on 100 in mathematics uh, and I had interest in astronomy, uh, cosmos cosmology so then, so then my dad told me stories and i was, and I was uh, imagining, imagining. We, had we had very little, very little books and uh, very little material and that, that stuff we didn't have google of course so it was all based on imagination and creativity back then so today's kids they are the students youngsters they are very bad they are blessed with all kinds of technology but we had to imagine a lot and um, Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan and, and these great, great scientists and, scientists and philosophers, philosophers uh, they were the ones, were the ones who that inspired, inspired me to become what I am today. So, so I read this somewhere, I read this somewhere and, and I said, this oh, yes, this is to man must rise above and beyond Earth's atmosphere, and, and only thus will he know more about the universe in which he lives. In which he lives. So Socrates back then in 500 BC, he was such a great visionary. Today uh, we have the space vehicles, the rockets and um, the spacecraft spaceship to take us from Earth to space. And um, this was what made an impact. So astronomy deals with all, sitting here and doing observations of the celestial bodies and mathematics and all this is involved. But to uh, go into space and space engineering and technology is quite recent because it came after only after World War II. And um, we all know that uh, USSR or Russia being the pioneers by far uh, they have been the pioneers in space engineering and technology and uh, then of course came uh, American space agency, premier space agency, NASA. So uh, this is a great picture, one of the astronauts, uh, my friends, he shared this, so a picture taken from space. Uh, and uh, earth at the bottom and clouds and horizon and then we can see the sky becoming darker and we can see moonrise so this has been fascinating for everyone i'm sure and therefore space engineering and technology uh, which is a, a multidisciplinary branch uh, this takes us into space we can put spacecraft or satellites into space we can take human beings into space so all this came only in the 1950s and especially this one Sputnik being the first man-made satellite that Russia sent so Sir Arthur C. Clarke a science fiction writer he had said a day may come when man will put a man-made satellite so we all know only earth has just one natural satellite moon but but then a man-made satellite or artificial satellite that will be sent 
very soon. He had said and he had predicted this in the 1940s. And so therefore I believe, I'm a staunch believer that yesterday's science is today's technology. Yesterday's fiction is today's reality. So all this, uh, you know, reading this stuff, I grew up and uh, wanted to be a part of uh, this kind of space engineering technology. And we only had Soviet and some magazines and some international books and magazines and stuff that we went to library and read and referred. we did not have much uh, material. So this is how uh, science and technology, especially space technology, really fascinated me and uh, this is the picture of the first cosmonaut, the first human being created history, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, CCCP USSR, the Russian first pilot and cosmonaut who made the iconic space voyage. And um, this is, of course, Saturn V rocket or the uh, space vehicle that put humans on moon, that is the Apollo mission. Uh, and this is a, the famous picture from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the rocket lifting off and taking three astronauts, astronaut Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins to moon. So all this had fascinated me, but little did I know then, little did I know that uh, back then that I would be associated with a premier space agency like NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, uh, the uh, space agency that has uh, a huge budget of billions of dollars. And today they have, uh, till date, they have put maximum number of satellites, the uh, ellipse and the blue dots, uh, white dots you can see, and blue marble that is Earth, and letters in white NASA, and the red probe that depicts or stands for space exploration, low earth orbit and deep space. So all this happened only uh, when I reached like my early 30s. So it took a decade or dozen years for me to get here. So like uh, Vimal Vakluji said, uh, a modest beginning uh, I did from electronics department uh, in the laboratory at the ETE and um, I would uh, you know, mentor and uh, guide students and uh, solve their problems. So from a modest beginning, zero kilometer above the earth, that is uh, a simple ENTC lab. Uh, and then aviation, uh, I started teaching in IAAT, uh, I taught principles of flight, avionics. So these subjects uh, that, that were close to my heart because I love airplanes and 40,000 feet. It took me literally and figuratively, my leap was uh, this way. Uh, I took this quantum jump. And it was then when I was at the Aeronautical Institute that uh, I got to know that there is a space educators program, a course at NASA, uh, wherein they uh, train the teachers. Uh, it's a professional development course for educators. And um, I just happened to apply for it. I did not take it very seriously. But then, of course, the application was such a brief one. Only to one essay, I had to make an impact. So they uh, realized that uh, there's so much passion for space engineering technology and she is a space educator so uh, they gave me this opportunity to attend uh, the program and uh, therefore NASA uh, did a whole lot of impact and it was a game changer for me uh, professionally and uh, as an individual too because uh, my career uh, it was uh, not I mean I had faced some ups and downs I was sidelined maybe uh, I was not a permanent uh, professor or lecturer at the uh, University of Pune also I had taught but then this after attending NASA Space Educators program, then people started coming to me and they said, we would like to felicitate you, we would like to invite you as chief guest, guest of honor. So on that part, uh, the awards, rewards, uh, they came later on, but it is the knowledge and it's the same individual, uh, the thirst for knowledge that I have had from the very beginning. Even today, I sit for hours together at night also. I learn new things every day. Well, this is a picture taken from the International Space Station, so illuminated view of Earth. So my motto is beginning from the IETE as such, 
and then uh, my journey uh, to Marshall Space Flight Center, it was inside these doors that years in this uh, academy, this program, uh, we were not only taught engineering subjects uh, like space engineering, technology, mathematics, STEM education, but not only that, but also uh, space simulation. So in this simulator, we are like astronauts and uh, they really took us to that space journey. It's like uh, I have not gone beyond the stratosphere but only through simulator a great deal of uh, experience i got and this is a precursor training to astronauts training so uh, it's my honor and privilege uh, that i could attend this particular training and space shot it takes you like a rocket 10 20 feet uh, abruptly you are taken up and then free fall we experience micro and zero gravity and this is my colleague uh, michelle who is uh, going to experience uh, the multi-axis chair. The astronauts experience all of this when they go into space. So this is myself on the zero, uh, or rather it's microgravity floor, uh, the uh, moon gravity, you know, one-sixth gravity experience. So I got all of this experience only in one training program and it was uh, trust me uh, as much as the four years engineering course and then by then i had done my specialization in telecommunications but it is only in this a uh, fortnight training very intensive training that i experienced so much a uh, great deal of uh, knowledge and experience rich uh, a very enriching experience. So this is myself, uh, because I'm an engineer, they made me a flight engineer and I'm uh, doing all that stuff, like extravehicular activity or spacewalk. Uh, so all this through simulation we did. And um, this is underwater rescue operation. And uh, when astronauts actually come back to Earth, they splash down into the Pacific Ocean and they come on the ground. So all this experience, uh, I went through, this is Jordi and myself uh, doing the, uh, you know, the maintenance and repair outside the space vehicle. So even if it is a, uh, it's a simulator, it's an experience as good as a, a real time and a real, uh, realistic experience. So I also had the honor of meeting many of the NASA's, uh, the former administrators, managers, uh, scientists, engineers, astronauts, and um, that made an impact on my career. And then after that, after returning back to India, I have done popularizing space science and technology. And uh, this uh, is very inspirational because uh, it was uh, uh, this quote, uh, Neil Armstrong's quote that I had included in my essay that made an impact, I'm sure. So this is a small step for man and a giant leap for mankind. That is what astronaut Neil Armstrong had said, and it is his foot, first ever, first ever uh, human foot on moon or another celestial body and history was created in 1969 then uh, the apollo mission landed uh, neil armstrong and buzz aldrin on moon and michael collins was orbiting around the moon to bring them back safely to earth so all this made an impact on me and um, uh, of course, uh, every day I do a uh, lot of study. And then, uh, therefore, recent times when uh, ISRO's Chandrayaan 2 and now very recently Chandrayaan 3 uh, lander, Vikram lander landed on the south pole of moon. So um, people come to me to take interviews on radio and television, many channels. So as a space, uh, space, science uh, space science and technology communicator. Uh, I do a very honest job of explaining in very simple words what the mission is all about. So whenever NASA's uh, rocket or missions take off, or be it even Indian uh, Space Research Organization, ISRO's missions, uh, I give television and radio interviews. So all this is uh, very inspirational. Uh, of course, I had the honor of meeting Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in 2009 when I attended the International Space Conference at Orlando, Florida. And I could see, uh, we could meet, when we met Neil Armstrong, he was like, uh, we went to moon, but it was not a big deal. So such modest and humble human beings uh, they are, the real life heroes. 
So this is Buzz Aldrin. We had lunch with him and he shared his views about Moon, Mars and beyond. So my journey into NASA, and I went six, seven times later on again in various capacities. So I, uh, I have been uh, like reading and learning a lot. And the ultimate aim of space exploration is to uh, find if there is life elsewhere in the universe. So search for extraterrestrial intelligence, safety institutes, conference, and all that as well I have attended. And I have uh, been to NASA's Ames Research Center, Johnson Space Center, Kennedy, uh, and many of the centers. And today, my uh, it's uh, a proud feeling that my students that I have mentored, they work with NASA Ames. One noteworthy uh, like uh, contribution is uh, Hemil Modi. He's, a, he's an innovation scientist at NASA Ames, and uh, uh, he's the recipient of big awards, leadership awards, iconic leadership awards from NASA. And being an Indian as well, but like uh, they know that now India is doing great stuff, be it in our subcontinent or whether our people are working elsewhere, everywhere abroad. So my students, they work at European Space Agency as well, not just NASA, but Russia, some are in Japan, Japanese, uh, JAXA. Uh, one girl recently, she did a, uh, an internship there. And the students that I have mentored and um, they have joined International Space University. And many of the girls from small towns, they are the recipients of Dr. Kalpana Chawla International Scholarship. And it is for Indian girls. And uh, trust me, they're all small town girls. So uh, it's the big dreams that matter. It doesn't matter from where you come, but it, all that matters is where you're going or you're heading. So likewise, my career as well, from uh, zero kilometers above the Earth, so in a modest lab to uh, 40,000 feet avionics and all these airplanes, subject stuff I was teaching in Aeronautical Institute. And that space, space is infinite, and so are the opportunities. And sky is the lower limit. So today, I'm placed at uh, this juncture where, where I myself have a lot of opportunities as a space ambassador and I may make it to space one day but it is for me as an educator the proudest feeling is that my students are doing great work and uh, they are going places so uh, that is what matters to me so all these are great pictures astrophotography uh, some of my students also, also they have taken up this as a career astrophotography so doing photography in space or sending drones and uh, ca uh, onboard cameras and taking pictures from space of course this is astronaut rusty who went to moon as well and um, some of my friends they keep sharing these pictures and of course i've met uh, sunita williams as well and many of the nasas and uh, russian uh, cosmonauts astronauts and cosmonauts i have met they are the real life heroes and great inspiration for me so uh, this is the precursor training that we got we received and these are the astronauts who really make it big they are the bravest of the brave because uh, it, it's like when they go on a mission there's no guarantee that they may come back so it's a high profile job but it is a it's a riskiest thing so so uh, by the way, I never had the opportunity to meet uh, late Kalpana Chawla, but I know her folks, uh, Papaji, recently he passed away. I have had the honor of meeting her entire family and her siblings and in touch with them. And now because my students, the girls, they're continuing the legacy of late Kalpana because they are the recipients of Dr. Kalpana Chawla International Scholarship. So Papaji would always tell me, Lina, you are doing a great job. You are taking Kalpana's dream ahead. What she could not achieve after 40, 41, she died in the Columbia disaster. So later on, your students now, they are coming in and filling that space because a void was created. And uh, Kalpana for me and for my students, they, uh, she is immortal. She is the guiding star and we really miss her. But my girls, the young students of Indian subcontinent. They are the recipients of Dr. Kalpana Chawla scholarship. So we are very proud that this legacy is being continued. And 
Of course, her famous words were, the path from dreams to reality does exist. So she not only motivates and inspires me, but a whole lot of young generation of uh, the future astronauts and space scientists. In the Astronaut Hall of Fame at Kennedy Space Center, uh, the building behind me, uh, they have paid homage to all those who lost their lives in space. So most of the scientists, uh, the astronauts that I have made, the, uh, I've met uh, in America or in Russia, uh, most of the astronauts, they believe astronauts and cosmonauts, they are pilots and they are uh, uh, the bravest uh, soldiers, actually, soldiers actually they are the real life, the real life heroes. heroes they believe in, they believe in this life spirit is life is either an, an incredible adventure, adventure or nothing at all so i had, so I had the honor of meeting miss sonita williams one and, and uh, of course for me uh, after coming back to india after the training uh, i went to east many, the many centers, of the centers even before uh, this happened this NASA happened, happened, NASA happened, and I was and doing, I was doing fact research, fact research as well. I had been to ISRO's Bangalore and uh, uh, Ahmedabad Satellite uh, satellite Application Center, SSC, and VSSC in Thiruvananthapuram. But today, uh, I send my students for IIST, BTEC, and MTech programs, and for internship at ISRO, GRDO. And I'm proud that we are continuing this legacy because Sir C. B. Raman himself was the mentor to Dr. Sarabhai, and Dr. Sarabhai, uh, he was Dr. Vasantra Govarikas and Pramod uh, Kalesar's mentor and you know guru. And today, they are my gurus and they are my mentors and uh, my students are uh, getting inspiration from us. So we are continuing this rich legacy of the men of science from India as well. So gone are those days when students used to come to me and say that, ma'am, we want to go to NASA and work there. We want to work abroad. But today, most of them, they want to stay back. And I encourage this. I ask the young girls to stay back in India and work for our country because this is now Atmanir Bharat and we want to do homegrown technology and my startup Astro Educate, we train and mentor students and encourage them to join either ISO or GRDO or come up with startups. So we are encouraging and nurturing this innovation and uh, you know, startups, startups. Uh, because now, uh, because now the right time is the right the time and the best space. time for space. So, like, so, honorable like honorable Modi ji says, space ke liye, bahut achhe din aaye hai, aur achhe din aane wale hai. And uh, I'm sure uh, youngsters will take the example of such great scientists and engineers of India who laid the foundation of uh, Baba Atomic Energy Research Center, BRC, Dr. Homi Baba, and the founding father of nuclear program, and also Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, India's founding father, ISRO, or uh, space program, and Dr. APJ Kalam, sir, Dr. Uh, you know, I have met most of the chairman ISRO, that is, Dr. Radha Krishnan, sir, Madhavan Nair, sir. Uh, Dr. Kiran Kumar, sir, and of course, last year I met uh, Mr. Somnath, sir, Dr. Somnath as well. Uh, they are doing a great uh, uh, turn, they are doing a great contribution to India. And today, I encourage my students to stay back in India, don't go abroad, work for our nation because our motherland needs us. And the youngsters should get inspired by uh, our contribution. Therefore, last year at the India Space Congress, I was invited to inspire and encourage youngsters to join India's space program, if not directly into ISO, but as startups, as suppliers. And um, trust me, many of my friends and students have been indirectly, directly part of uh, Chandrayaan mission, Vikram Lander, and uh, service provided uh, suppliers to the actuators, the thrusters, Vikram uh, Landers, uh, you know, uh, even the solar panels, uh, so on and so forth. So today, uh, we are encouraging homegrown technology. And therefore, what we saw in the initial years 
ISROs, INSAT, and all these programs, but it was Chandrayaan 1 and 2, and then Mangalya. And now in the coming times, after Chandrayaan 3, then Aditya L1 mission, and Mangalyaan 2, so on and so forth and Gaganya mission we are all waiting for it because some of my students will be uh, the youngsters the future space scientists and, and engineers will be a part of this mission so it's a proud feeling uh, and uh, it's very encouraging and I come on television and radio for the interviews so as a science and technology communicator or Vigyan Prasarat it's my duty to uh, very uh, in very simple words explain what this mission is all about so all this i keep doing in marathi hindi english so on and so forth and uh well one of my greatest inspirations has been cosmonaut rakesh sharmaji who i keep meeting every uh, now and then and he is also now part of the gaganyan missions uh, planning and training so he is a great inspiration for all of us and when I had met Kiran Kumar, Kumar sir, he was asking me, had you worked at ISRO? I said, well, I have visited many of the ISRO centers, but I have not been an insider of ISRO. But then I encouraged my students to, uh, you know, attend. And we have also organized ISRO's exhibitions. And in this way, as a science communicator, and now very recently, we have also founded what is called so C V Raman Science Research Center through Science Laboratory and Science Fun and Learn DIY Do It Yourself. We are encouraging we are encouraging the youngsters to do more of more and more of practical stuff and enjoy science doing it with their hands with their hands and through experimentation. So uh, this has been my journey and now for me uh, like personally and professionally, it's a great moment because uh, recently I had met Dr. Jill Tato, the director of SETI Institute, and uh, uh, she had played the, uh, of course, she has been the director of SETI Institute, and her role was played by uh, the Hollywood actress Jodie Foster in the movie Contact in the science fiction. So I have, uh, in this, throughout my journey, I have met many great scientists, engineers, astrophysicists, Dr. Seth Sostak. Uh, he talks about are we alone so the ultimate aim of space exploration is now for me uh, to find how we came here on planet earth and is there life elsewhere in the universe so i took up to astrobiology in the very recent time so i keep reading even biology and life science now because it's all the more important of us is carbon-based life so elsewhere on other in other worlds it could be silicon based or phosphorus based life biochemistry all this i keep reading every day so trust me it's very challenging but i enjoy doing this i'm a perpetual student and um, I keep learning and reading every day. This is Mr. Dr. Tom I had met at, uh, at the Ames Research Center. So when we met, he asked me, are you Kalpana's sister? I said, no. Uh, but yes, uh, Kalpana has been a role model for me. So many people tell me that I'm a lookalike. Uh, when I was invited to SETI Institute, yes, by the way, I'd met uh, Dr. Frank Drake, so whose Drake's equation is very famous. Is there life elsewhere in the universe? So it's a probability, uh, the term, a non-zero term. So therefore, it proves that, yes, life exists in some of the other forms in other worlds. So um, I have met many of the greats, but it was my dream to meet late Professor Stephen Hawking, but I couldn't meet him. Of course, I'll go uh, once to uh, meet his folks in uh, England. Dr. Jayant Narikar, sir, Dr. Gowarikar, sir, they have been mentors to me. And um, this is uh, Papaji felicitating me. And he also used to call me Kalpana. So recently, when I went to Punjab Engineering College, Pak Chandigarh, and uh, Dr. Setia, the director, he said, we thought Kalpana is coming back. So you are her lookalike, they tell me. So, uh, yes, there have been many awards and rewards. This one uh, was at the IETE. And um, what I do is I encourage the youngsters, you know, to take up science, pure science, engineering. And uh, in whatever it is, their aspiration, 
we groom them through a startup Astro Edu Pune and also through the Sidiraman Science Research Center. This is uh, one of my uh, mentors, Padmashri Ramut Kali, sir. So my students received award for this uh, particular project. They are all going places as well. And we do stargazing. We're going to do it next weekend. Uh, many of our programs, like uh, educational programs, workshops, and conferences, we um, we impart knowledge and inculcate this thing in the youngsters, the scientific temperament, and we want them to be India's future scientists and engineers. So, salute to my guru, my mentor, Dr. Shankara Gowarikar, sir, and his nephew, Ashutosh Gowarikar, left-hander, my friend and uh, fellow left-hander. He made the film for days. So, many of my students also tell me 